The National Park Service (NPS) is an agency of the United States federal government that manages all national parks, many national monuments, and other conservation and historical properties with various title designations. It was created on August 25, 1916, by Congress through the National Park Service Organic Act and is an agency of the United States Department of the Interior. The NPS is charged with a dual role of preserving the ecological and historical integrity of the places entrusted to its management, while also making them available and accessible for public use and enjoyment. As of 2018, the NPS employs approximately 27,000 employees who oversee 418 units, of which 60 are designated national parks. History National parks and national monuments in the United States were originally individually managed under the auspices of the Department of the Interior. The movement for an independent agency to oversee these federal lands was spearheaded by business magnate and conservationist Stephen Mather, as well as J. Horace McFarland. With the help of journalist Robert Sterling Yard, Mather ran a publicity campaign for the Department of the Interior. They wrote numerous articles that praised the scenic and historic qualities of the parks and their possibilities for educational, inspirational, and recreational benefits. This campaign resulted in the creation of a National Park Service. On August 25, 1916, President Woodrow Wilson signed a bill that mandated the agency to conserve the scenery and the natural and historic objects and wildlife therein, and to provide for the enjoyment of the same in such manner and by such means as will leave them unimpaired for the enjoyment of future generations." Mather became the first director of the newly formed NPS. On March 3, 1933, President Herbert Hoover signed the Reorganization Act of 1933. The act would allow the president to reorganize the executive branch of the United States government. It wasn't until later that summer when the new president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, made use of this power. Deputy Director Horace M. Albright had suggested to President Roosevelt that the historic sites from the American Civil War should be managed by the National Park Service, rather than the War Department. President Roosevelt agreed and issued two executive orders to make it happen. These two executive orders not only transferred to the National Park Service all the War Department historic sites, but also the national monuments managed by the Department of Agriculture and the parks in and around the Capitol, which had been run by an independent office. In 1951, Conrad Wirth became director of the National Park Service and went to work on bringing park facilities up to the standards that the public expected. The demand for parks after the end of the World War II had left the parks overburdened with demands that could not be met. In 1952, with the support of President Dwight D. Eisenhower, he began Mission 66, a 10-year effort to upgrade and expand park facilities for the 50th anniversary of the Park Service. New parks were added to preserve unique resources and existing park facilities were upgraded and expanded. In 1966, as the Park Service turned 50 years old, emphasis began to turn from just saving great and wonderful scenery and unique natural features to making parks accessible to the public. Director George Hartzig began the process with the creation of the National Lakeshores and then National Recreation Areas. National Park Service Since its inception in 1916, the National Park Service has managed each of the United States national parks, which have grown in number over the years to 60. Yellowstone National Park was the first national park in the United States. In 1872, there was no state government to manage it, so the federal government assumed direct control. Yosemite National Park began as a state park. The land for the park was donated by the federal government to the state of California in 1864 for perpetual conservation. Yosemite was later returned to federal ownership. At first, each national park was managed independently, with varying degrees of success. In Yellowstone, the civilian staff was replaced by the U.S. Army in 1886. Due to the irregularities in managing these national treasures, Stephen Mather petitioned the federal government to improve the situation. In response, Secretary of the Interior Franklin K. Lane challenged him to lobby for creating a new agency, the National Park Service, to manage all national parks and some national monuments. 
Mather was successful with the ratification of the National Park Service Organic Act in 1916. Later, the agency was given authority over other protected areas, many with varying designations as Congress created them. Directors National Park System The National Park System NPS includes all properties managed by the National Park Service also, confusingly, NPS. The title or designation of a unit need not include the term park, indeed, most do not. The system as a whole is considered to be a national treasure of the United States, and some of the more famous national parks and monuments are sometimes referred to metaphorically as crown jewels. The system encompasses approximately 84.4 million acres, 338,000 square kilometers, of which more than 4.3 million acres, 17,000 square kilometers, remain in private ownership. The largest unit is Wrangell Street, Elias National Park and Preserve, Alaska. At 13,200,000 acres, 53,000 square kilometers, it is over 16% of the entire system. The smallest unit in the system is Thaddeus Kosciuszko National Memorial, Pennsylvania, at 0.02 acre 80 square meters. In addition to administering its units and other properties, the National Park Service also provides technical and financial assistance to several affiliated areas authorized by Congress. The largest affiliated area is New Jersey Pinelands National Reserve at 1,164,025 acres 4,711 square kilometers. The smallest is Benjamin Franklin National Memorial at less than 0.01 acres 40 square meters. Although all units of the national park system in the United States are the responsibility of a single agency, they are all managed under individual pieces of authorizing legislation or, in the case of national monuments created under the Antiquities Act, Presidential Proclamation. For example, because of provisions within their enabling legislation, Congaree National Park is almost entirely wilderness area devoid of development, yet Yosemite allows unique developments such as the Badger Pass Ski Area and the O'Shaughnessy Dam within its boundaries. Death Valley National Park has an active mine legislated within its boundaries. Such irregularities would not be found in other parks unless specifically provided for with exceptions by the legislation that created them. Topic. Holdings For current specifics and a multitude of information, see the Quick Facts section of the NPS website. Topic. Criteria Most units of the National Park Service have been established by an Act of Congress, with the President confirming the action by signing the Act into law. The exception, under the Antiquities Act, allows the President to designate and protect areas as national monuments by executive order. Regardless of the method used, all parks are to be of national importance. A potential park should meet all four of the following standards. It is an outstanding example of a particular type of resource. It possesses exceptional value or quality in illustrating or interpreting the natural or cultural themes of our nation's heritage. It offers superlative opportunities for recreation, for public use and enjoyment, or for scientific study. It retains a high degree of integrity as a true, accurate, and relatively unspoiled example of the resource. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Special designations. Wilderness areas are covered by the U.S. National Wilderness Preservation System, which protects federally managed lands that are of a pristine condition, established by the Wilderness Act Public Law 88-577 in 1964. The National Wilderness Preservation System originally created hundreds of wilderness zones within already protected federally administered property, consisting of over 9 million acres 36,000 square kilometers. Marine Protected Areas MPAs began with Executive Order 13158 in May 2000, when official MPAs were established for the first time. The initial listing of U.S. areas was presented in 2010, consisting of areas already set aside under other legislation. 
The National Park Service has 19 park units designated as MPAs. Budget As of 2016, the National Park Service has an annual budget of about $3 billion and an estimated $12 billion maintenance backlog. The National Park Service's budget is divided into two primary areas discretionary and mandatory spending. Within each of these areas, there are numerous specific purposes to which Congress directs the service's activities. The budget of the National Park Service includes discretionary spending which is broken out into two portions, the direct operations of the national parks and the special initiatives. Listed separately are the special initiatives of the service for the year specified in the legislation. For fiscal year 2010, the service has been charged with five initiatives. They include, stewardship and education, professional excellence, youth programs, climate impacts, and budget restructure and realignment. Topic. Discretionary spending Discretionary spending includes the operations of the National Parks ONPS, from which all park operations are paid. The United States Park Police funds cover the high-profile law enforcement operations at some of the large parks, i.e., Gateway National Recreation Area, Golden Gate National Recreation Area, and the National Mall. The National Recreation and Preservation Program and the Urban Park and Recreation Fund are outreach programs to support state and local outdoor recreational activities. The ONPS section of the budget is divided into five operational areas. These areas include Topic: <laughs> Resource Stewardship These are funds and people directed towards the restoration, preservation, and maintenance of natural and cultural resources. The resource staff includes biologists, geologists, archaeologists, preservation specialists and a variety of specialized employees to restore and preserve cultural buildings or natural features. <laughs> Visitor services Funds go towards providing for public programs and educational programs for the general public and school groups. This area is commonly staffed by park rangers, who are trained in providing walks, talks, and educational programs to the public. There is an increased number of media specialists, who provide for the exhibits along trails, roads and in visitor contact facilities, as well as the written brochures and websites. Park protection This includes the staff responding to visitor emergencies medical and criminal, and the protection of the park's natural and cultural resources from damage by those persons visiting the park. The staff includes park rangers, park police, criminal investigators, and communication center operators. Facility maintenance and operations This is the cost of maintaining the necessary infrastructure within each park that supports all the services provided. It includes the plows and heavy equipment for road clearing, repairs and construction. There are buildings, trails, roads, docks, boats, utility pipes and wires, and a variety of hidden systems that make a park accessible by the public. The staff includes equipment operators, custodians, trail crews, electricians, plumbers, engineers, architects, and other building trade specialists. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Park support. This is the staff that provides for the routine logistical needs of the parks. There are human resource specialists, contracting officers, property specialists, budget managers, accountants and information technology specialists. Topic: <laughs> External administrative costs. These costs are bills that are paid directly to outside organizations as part of the logistical support needed to run the parks. It includes rent payments to the General Services Administration for building space, postage payments to the postal machine vendor, and other direct payments. Topic: 
Park partnerships These funds support the use of partnerships to achieve park preservation. $25 million have been provided for FY 2010. These funds require matching grants from individuals, foundations, businesses, and the private sector. Land and Water Conservation Fund LWCF. The LWCF supports land acquisition and state conservation assistance grant programs. The 2010 funds are the beginning of an incremental process to fully fund LWCF programs at $900 million. The Department of the Interior and the U.S. Forest Service use these funds to purchase critical lands to protect existing public lands. Grants will be made to states and local communities to preserve and protect Civil War battlefield sites that are not part of the national park system. The NPS State Conservation Assistance Program distributes funding to states for land preservation. Topic: Construction. This segment of the budget provides for the construction of new facilities or the replacement of aging and unsafe facilities. Additionally, there are funds in the recreation fees, park roads funding, and the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act that provide for other specific facilities, infrastructure work. Additional funds come from the Federal Land Highway Administration for the construction and repair of park roads. Historic Preservation Fund As the nation's leader in cultural preservation, funds are provided for a variety of programs to meet these needs nationwide. Two specific programs include the Save America's Treasures and the Preserve America. The Historic Preservation Offices makes grants available to the states, territories, and tribal lands. National Recreation and Preservation These funds go to local communities to preserve natural and cultural resources. Among the programs supported are the rivers, trails, and conservation assistance programs that promote community links to parks, natural resource conservation and outdoor recreation across America. Offsetting reductions and fixed costs in various accounts Within this category are a number of one-time events, which are added or removed as the events require. Notably in the FY 2009 and FY 2010 is the removal of the costs for the presidential inaugural. Other savings are identified through reduced operational costs from energy-efficient retrofitting and the demolition of structures beyond repair. American Recovery and Reinvestment Act Otherwise known as stimulus funds, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 provides funds to restore and preserve major infrastructures within the national parks. Great Lakes Restoration Initiative The Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, is a $475 million proposal included in the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency budget. The Park Service will participate through the EPA in restoration activities in those parks that are within the watershed of the Great Lakes. Activities will include such actions as removal of dumps and fuel spills. Park will monitor mercury, lead, DDT, and other contaminants in six parks on the Great Lakes. Work also includes the removal of invasive species and education on how to prevent their spread. There are YouTube videos about the work being done in this field. Topic mandatory spending Mandatory appropriations are those items created by other congressional legislation that must be paid for. They include the Recreational Fee Demonstration Program, which requires the distribution and expenditure of fees collected by the National Park Service. Other permanent appropriations include special funding categories to non-profit and state entities, which have been assigned to the National Park Service to manage. 
Miscellaneous trust funds includes funding sources that have been created by the federal government or private citizen, where the National Park Service or a specific park have been identified as the beneficiaries. And there is also the L and WCF Contract Authority, which is the Land and Water Conservation Fund, a congressionally created source of revenues managed by the National Park Service. Topic: <laughs> Employees and Volunteers. Annually, the NPS employs over 20,000 Americans with an additional 221,000 volunteers in parks who contribute about 6.4 million hours annually. Economic benefits According to a 2011 Michigan State University report prepared for the NPS, for each $1 invested in the NPS, the American public receives $4 in economic value. In 2011, national parks generated $30.1 billion in economic activity and 252,000 jobs nationwide. $13 billion of that amount went directly into communities within 60 miles of a NPS unit. Nomenclature The National Park Service uses over 20 different titles for the park units it manages, including National Park and National Monument. National parks preserve nationally and globally significant scenic areas and nature reserves. National monuments preserve a single unique cultural or natural feature. Devil's Tower National Monument was the first in 1906. National historic sites protect a significant cultural resource that is not a complicated site. Examples of these types of parks include Ford's Theater National Historic Site and William Howard Taft National Historic Site. National historical parks are larger areas with more complex subjects. Appomattox Courthouse National Historical Park was created in 1940. George Rogers Clark National Historical Park was dedicated in 1936. Historic sites may also be protected in national parks, monuments, seashores, and lakeshores. National military parks, battlefield parks, battlefield sites, and battlefields preserve areas associated with military history. The different designations reflect the complexity of the event and the site. Many of the sites preserve important Revolutionary War battles and Civil War battlefields. Military parks are the sites of larger actions, such as Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park, Vicksburg National Military Park, Gettysburg National Military Park, and Shiloh National Military Park—the original four from 1890. Examples of battlefield parks, battlefield sites, and national battlefields include Richmond National Battlefield Park, Bryce's Cross Roads National Battlefield Site, and Antietam National Battlefield. National seashores and national lakeshores offer preservation of the national coastline, while supporting water-based recreation. Cape Hatteras National Seashore was created in 1937. Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore and Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore, created in 1966, were the first national lakeshores. National rivers and wild and scenic riverways protect free-flowing streams over their length. The riverways may not be altered with dams, channelization, or other changes. Recreational pursuits are encouraged along the waterways. Ozark National Scenic Riverways was established in 1964. National recreation areas originally were units such as Lake Mead National Recreation Area surrounding reservoirs impounded by dams built by other federal agencies. Many of these areas are managed under cooperative agreement with the National Park Service. Now some national recreation areas are in urban centers because of the recommendations of a presidential commission the Outdoor Recreation Resources Review Commission ORRRC These include Gateway National Recreation Area and Golden Gate National Recreation Area which encompass significant cultural as well as natural resources The National Trails System preserves long distance routes across America the system was created in 1968 and consists of two major components. National Scenic Trails are long distance trails through some of the most scenic parts of the country. They received official protection in 1968. The Appalachian Trail and the Continental Divide Trail are the best known. National Historic Trails commemorate the roots of major historic events. 
Some of the best known are the Trail of Tears, the Mormon Trail, and the Santa Fe Trail. These trails are administered by several federal agencies. National preserves are for the protection of certain resources. Activities like hunting, fishing, and some mining are allowed. Big Cypress National Preserve and Big Thicket National Preserve were created in 1974 as the first national preserves. National reserves are similar to national preserves, but the operational authority can be placed with a local government. New Jersey Pinelands National Reserve was the first to be established in 1978. Visitors The National Park System receives over 280 million visits each year throughout the 413 units, with over 307 million visitors in 2015. Park visitation recreational only grew 64% between 1979 and 2015. The 10 most visited units of the National Park System handle over 28% of the visits to the 413 park units. The top 10% of parks 41 handle 62.8% of all visits, leaving the remaining 372 units to accommodate 37.2% of visits. Overnight stays Over 15 million visitors spend a night in one of the national park units during 2015. The largest number million were tent campers. The second largest group, 3.38 million, stayed in one of the lodges, followed by miscellaneous stays on boats, group sites, 2.15 million. The last three groups of overnight visitors included RV campers, 2.26 million, backcountry campers, 2.02 million, and users of the concession-run campgrounds, 1.42 million. Previous years of statistics are below. Annually, visitors are surveyed for their satisfaction with services and facilities provided. Services Consistently, the highest ranked service has been assistance from park employees 82% very good, 2007. Facilities Among facilities, the park visitor centers obtain a consistent 70% very good rating 73% in 2007. Youth programs The National Park Service offers a variety of youth-oriented programs. They range from the Web Ranger online program to many programs in each national park unit. The primary work opportunities for youth are through the Youth Corp networks. The oldest serving group is the Student Conservation Association It was established in 1957, committed to conservation and preservation. The SCA's goal is to create the next generation of conservation leaders. SCA volunteers work through internships, conservation jobs, and crew experiences. Volunteers conduct resource management, historic preservation, cultural resources and conservation programs to gain experience, which can lead to career development and further educational opportunities. The SCA places volunteers in more than 350 national park units and NPS offices each year. The CORE Network, formerly known as the National Association for Service and CORE, NASCC, represents 136 service and conservation corps. These groups have programs in 42 states and the District of Columbia. Corps members are between the ages of 16 to 25. Service and Conservation Corps are direct descendants of the Civilian Conservation Corps CCC of the 1930s that built park facilities in the national parks and other public parks around the country. The Corps Network was established in 1985. Youth Conservation Corps ages 15 to 18. The Youth Conservation Corps YCC, bring young people into a park to restore, preserve and protect a natural, cultural, or historical resources. Enrollees are paid for their work. Public Land Corps ages 16 to 25. The Public Land Corps PLC is a job helping to restore, protect and rehabilitate a local national parks. The enrollees learn about environmental issues in the park. A dozen nonprofit programs for Boy Scouts ages 7 to 18. The National Park Service works with the Boy Scouts of America. Members can become a scout ranger and earn a patch. The service formerly participated every four years at the BSA Jamboree at Fort A.P. Hill, Virginia. 
Many scouts have completed their eagle projects in a national park helping preserve the resources, while furthering the scouting experience. Programs for Girl Scouts ages 5 to 18. Girl Scouts can become a Girl Scout Ranger and earn a patch. The National Park Service works with Girl Scout troops through their linking girls to the land. Accessibility Access Pass The Access Pass offers free, lifetime admission to federal areas of the National Park Service, Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, U.S. Forest Service, and Tennessee Valley Authority. Service animals Service animals are allowed in all facilities and on most trails, with the exceptions of stock trails and areas closed by the superintendent to protect park resources. Service animals must always be leashed. Service animals in training and pets are subject to other park regulations. When traveling with an animal, carry water, and allow for stops. Dispose of pet feces in a trash bin. Camping The National Park System offers numerous accessible camping opportunities. In over 120 units, campgrounds have sites specifically designed for tent camper accessibility. Special campsites are located near restrooms with paved walkways to and from the restroom and water sources. Sites have hardened tenting sites that provide for easy access, but allow for tents to be erected on soil. Many additional units have pull-through trailer sites, providing for motorized use, but may have limited access to the rest of the campground facilities. Trails Money National Park units have fully accessible trails. Visitors should check the park's website to ensure that the trail is designed to meet their individual needs. Trails may have a compacted gravel surface, paved with asphalt, or a boardwalk. Many will have guardrails, others may have a ridge along the edge, detectable by the visually impaired using a cane and capable of stopping a wheelchair. Many have no detectable edge when there is a stable surface. Vista sparks that are known for their scenic vistas make them available through a variety of designs. Paved overlooks with accessible parking is the most common, and not always identified in written material. Road designs are configured to provide for mountain and landscape vistas from a vehicle. Additional information at the Disabled Traveler's Companion. Controversy regarding accessibility. On October 24, 2017, Secretary of the Interior Zinke proposed large fee hikes at 17 of the most visited national parks in order to address a backlog of maintenance at all national parks. The National Park Service felt that these changes, which would increase entrance fees from $25 to $75, were appropriate because they only targeted the most popular parks, which already have entrance fees. However, there was a nearly unanimous public backlash against this proposal. Many families felt this would prohibit them from being able to visit the parks. Further, there was concern that this hike would disproportionately affect low-income families, who are already underrepresented in visitation to national parks. Additionally, many organizations working to increase access to nature for families of color, such as Latino Outdoors and African American Nature and Parks Experience, spoke out against these proposed fee hikes. Altogether, more than 110,000 comments were posted on the National Park Service website, with 98% of them protesting this change. Representative Raul Grijalva commented, this is a prime example that activism works. In response to this strong public reaction, on April 12, 2018, Secretary Zinke released a statement replacing this plan with a more moderate proposal to raise prices incrementally across all parks with entrance fees. Topic concessions In an effort to increase visitation and allow for a larger audience to enjoy national park land, the National Park Service has numerous concession contracts with private businesses to bring recreation, resorts and other compatible amenities to their parks. NPS lodging opportunities exist at places such as the Wawana Hotel in Yosemite National Park and the Fort Baker Retreat and Conference Center in Golden Gate National Recreation Area. Adaptive reuses like those at Fort Baker, have raised some controversy from concerns about the historical integrity of these buildings, after extensive renovations and whether such alterations fall within the spirit and or the letter of the preservation laws they are protected by. Delaware North Corporation at Yosemite National Park, Yellowstone National Park, South Rim Grand Canyon National Park. 
Forever Resorts at Big Bend National Park, Blue Ridge Parkway, Badlands National Park, North Rim of Grand Canyon National Park, Olympic National Park, Lake Mead National Recreation Area, Mammoth Cave National Park, Isle Royale National Park, and Rocky Mountain National Park. Xantara Parks and Resorts at Bryce Canyon National Park, Crater Lake National Park, Death Valley National Park, South Rim Grand Canyon National Park, Mount Rushmore National Memorial, Painted Desert at Petrified Forest National Park, Yellowstone National Park, and Zion National Park. Litigation with Delaware North In 2015, Delaware North sued the NPS in the United States Court of Claims for breach of contract, alleging that the NPS had undervalued its trademarks of the names of iconic Yosemite National Park concession facilities. When it offered for bid the contract to operate these facilities, the National Park Service estimated the value of the intangible assets including the names, Awani, Badger Pass, Curry Village, and Yosemite Lodge at $3.5 million. Delaware North lost the contract, and asserted that the historic names were worth $51 million and maintained that the incoming concessioner had to be paid that amount. The Justice Department and the NPS asserted that this was an improper and wildly inflated value. Rather than pay Delaware North's demanded valuation, in January 2016 the NPS instead opted to rename the famous landmarks, effective in March. The Awani Hotel is slated to become the majestic Yosemite Hotel, Curry Village will become Half Dome Village, and the Wawana Hotel will become Big Trees Lodge. Widespread public outcry focused on Delaware North's decision to claim ownership of names within a national park. <laughs> <laughs> Bookstores At many park service sites a bookstore is operated by a non-profit cooperating association. The largest example is Eastern National, which runs bookstores in 30 states with 178 stores. Eastern National Western National Park Association Park Specific Crater Lake Natural History Association Cuyahoga Valley National Park Association Devil's Tower Natural History Association Bookstore Kennesaw Mountain Historical Association Oregon Caves Natural History Association Yellowstone Association Yosemite Conservancy Offices Headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., with regional offices in Anchorage, Atlanta, Lakewood, Colorado Denver, Omaha, May, Philadelphia, San Francisco and Seattle. The headquarters building of the National Park Service Southwest Regional Office is architecturally significant and is designated a National Historic Landmark. The National Park Service is a bureau of the U.S. Department of the Interior. The director is nominated by the President of the United States and confirmed by the U.S. Senate. The director is supported by six senior executives. They manage national programs, policy, and budget from the Washington, D.C., headquarters. Under the deputy director of operations are seven regional directors, who are responsible for national park management and program implementation. Together this group is called the National Leadership Council. The National Office is located in the main interior building, 1849 C Street NW, several blocks southwest of the White House. The central office is composed of 11 directorates, director, deputy directors, business services, workforce management, chief information officer, cultural resources, natural resource stewardship and science, office of the controller, park planning, facilities, and lands, partnerships and visitor experience, visitor and resource protection, and the United States Park Police. Topic. Staff and volunteers. Employees By the mid-1950s, the primary employees of the service were the park rangers, who had broad responsibilities on the park's behalf. 
They cleaned up trash, operated heavy equipment, fought fires, managed traffic, cleared trails and roads, provided information to visitors, managed museums, performed rescues, flew aircraft, and investigated crime. The National Park Service employs many kinds of workers, as shown below. National Park Service Ranger Interpreter Law Enforcement Park Management Superintendent Deputy United States Park Police Emergency Management Emergency Medical Providers Search and Rescue Specialists Dispatchers Maintenance including carpenters, plumbers, masons, laborers, auto mechanics, motor vehicle operators, heavy equipment operators, electricians Park Planning Architects, engineers, and landscape architects Resource management including archaeologist, biologist, botanist, aquatics, soil scientist, geologist History curators, historians, preservation technicians, historic architects, archivists Fire management managers, weather specialist, firefighters, engine captains, crew superintendents, battalion chiefs Public affairs Administration Human Resources, Finance, Accountants, Information Technology, Budgeting, Concessions Management Locations are varied. Parks exist in the nation's larger cities like New York City Federal Hall Memorial National Historic Site, Atlanta Martin Luther King Jr. National Historic Site, and San Diego Cabrillo National Monument to some of the remotest areas of the continent like Hovenweep National Monument in southeastern Utah, to Anakchak National Monument in King Salmon, Alaska. Topic volunteers in Parks VIP. The Volunteers in Parks program was authorized in 1969 by the Volunteers in the Parks Act of 1969, for the purpose of allowing the public to serve in the nation's parks providing support and skills for their enhancement and protection. Volunteers come from all walks of life and include professionals, artists, laborers, homemakers and students, performing varied duties. Many come from surrounding communities and some travel significant distances. In a 2005 annual report, the National Park Service reported that, 137,000 VIPs contributed 5.2 million hours of service or 2,500 FTEs valued at $91,260,000 based on the private sector value figure of $17.55 as used by AARP, Points of Light Foundation, and other large-scale volunteer programs including many federal agencies. There are 365 separate volunteer programs throughout the National Park Service. Since 1990, the number of volunteers has increased an average of 2% per year. FTE stands for full-time equivalency or one work year. In 2012, the National Park Service reported that over 221,000 volunteers contributed about 6.4 million hours annually. Additionally, other types of volunteers also conduct off site NPS public outreach and education, such as the Trails and Rails program guides on board certain segments of long haul Amtrak routes, who offer passengers insights to the travel area's natural resources and heritage. Artist in residence across the nation, there are special opportunities for artists visual artists, photographers, sculptors, performers, writers, composers, and crafts to live and work in a park. Twenty-nine parks currently participate in the Artist in Residence program. <laughs> Law enforcement The National Park Service commonly refers to law enforcement operations in the agency as visitor and resource protection. There are several different types of law enforcement employees, including Type 1 and Type 2 law enforcement rangers and special agents. The United States Park Police is a unit of the National Park Service, with jurisdiction in all National Park Service areas and certain other federal and state lands. Most law enforcement rangers, park police officers, and special agents receive their training through Federal Law Enforcement Training Center FLETC. Type 2 law enforcement rangers receive their training through FLETC accredited seasonal law enforcement academies. Topic: <inaudible> Jurisdiction. <inaudible> <inaudible> there are several types of National Park Service jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is set by the enabling legislation for each individual unit of the NPS and is considered part of the Special Maritime and Territorial Jurisdiction of the United States. 
Law enforcement on NPS lands with exclusive jurisdiction is solely conducted by NPS law enforcement rangers field officers or the U.S. Park Police. Many NPS units have concurrent jurisdiction and share law enforcement authority with their state and or local county law enforcement agencies. Some National Park Service units have proprietary or partial jurisdiction where law enforcement authority for certain serious incidents lies with the state or county. Most NPS units have memorandums of understanding with outside law enforcement agencies, so that policies are in place when and if outside agency assistance is needed. <laughs> law enforcement rangers Uniformed law enforcement rangers, park police officers and special agents enforce federal laws and regulations governing NPS lands and resources. These personnel can also enforce some or all state laws on NPS lands. As part of that mission, LEOs carry firearms, defensive equipment, make arrests, execute search warrants, complete reports and testify in court. They establish a regular and recurring presence on a vast amount of public lands, roads, and recreation sites. The primary focus of their jobs is the protection of natural resources, protection of NPS employees and the protection of visitors. To cover the vast and varied terrain under their jurisdiction, NPS employees use numerous types of vehicles, horses, aircraft, UTV, ATVs, snowmobiles, dirt bikes and boats. <laughs> <laughs> Special agents Special agents are criminal investigators who plan and conduct investigations as part of the Investigative Services Branch concerning possible violations of criminal and administrative provisions of the NPS and other statutes under the United States Code and or Code of Federal Regulations. Special agents can be uniformed or plain clothes officers. Special agents often carry concealed firearms, and other defensive equipment, make arrests, carry out complex criminal investigations, present cases for prosecution to U.S. attorneys, and prepare investigative reports. Field agents travel a great deal and typically cover several NPS units and several states. Criminal investigators occasionally conduct internal and civil claim investigations. Laws enforced Generally speaking the laws enforced on NPS lands are covered in Title 36 Code of Federal Regulations, the NPS also enforces United States Code. Title 16 of the United States Code, Title 18 of the United States Code and Title 21 of the United States Code are enforced most commonly. The National Park Service generally also has the authority to enforce any state law not covered already by federal laws under the Assimilative Crimes Act, 18 U.S.C. Section 13. However, by policy the National Park Service cannot charge violators with a state offense that has a harsher penalty than an equivalent federal law already on the books. Commissioned National Park Service employees must follow all policies outlined in DOI reference manuals and director's orders in performance of their duties. United States Park Police The United States Park Police USPP is the oldest uniformed federal law enforcement agency in the United States. It functions as a full-service law enforcement agency with responsibilities and jurisdiction in those National Park Service areas primarily located in the Washington, D.C., San Francisco, and New York City areas. In addition to performing the normal crime prevention, investigation, and apprehension functions of an urban police force, the Park Police are responsible for policing many of the famous monuments in the United States and share law enforcement jurisdiction in all lands administered by the service with a force of National Park Rangers tasked with the same law enforcement powers and responsibilities. Special divisions. 
Other special NPS divisions include the Archaeology Program, Historic American Buildings Survey, National Register of Historic Places, National Natural Landmarks, the Rivers, Trails and Conservation Assistance Program, the Challenge Cost Share Program, the Federal Lands to Parks, the Hydropower Relicensing Program, the Land and Water Conservation Fund, the National Trails System, the Partnership Wild and Scenic Rivers Program, and the Natural Sounds and Night Skies Division. Centers The National Park Service operates four archaeology related centers Harper's Ferry Center in Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, the Midwest Archaeological Center in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Southeast Archaeological Center in Tallahassee, Florida, and the Western Archaeological and Conservation Center in Tucson, Arizona. The Harper's Ferry Center specializes in interpretive media development and object conservation. The other three focus to various degrees on archaeological research and museum object curation and conservation. National Park Service training centers include, Horace Albright Training Center, Grand Canyon, Stephen Mather Training Center, Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, Historic Preservation Training Center, Frederick, Maryland and Capitol Training Center, Washington, D.C. The Submerged Resources Center is the unit responsible for inventory and evaluation of submerged resources throughout the national park system. The SRC is based out of the Intermountain Region's headquarters in Lakewood, Colorado. The National Center for Preservation Technology and Training, located in Natchitoches, Louisiana, conducts research and training in the fields of archaeology, architecture, landscape architecture and materials conservation. Preservation Programs HABs, HAER, the oldest federal preservation program, the Historic American Buildings Survey, Historic American Engineering Record HABS, HAER, produces graphic and written documentation of historically significant architectural, engineering and industrial sites and structures. Dating from 1934, the Historic American Buildings Survey HABS was chartered to document historic architecture—primarily houses and public buildings—of national or regional significance. Originally a New Deal employment, preservation program, after World War II, HABs employed summer teams of advanced undergraduate and graduate students to carry out the documentation, a tradition followed to this day. Many of the structures they documented no longer exist. HABs, HAER produces measured drawings, large format photographs and written histories of historic sites, structures and objects, that are significant to the architectural, engineering and industrial heritage of the U.S. Its 25,000 records are part of the Library of Congress. HABs, HAER is administered by the NPS Washington office and five regional offices, Historic American Buildings Surveying 1933, the National Park Service, Department of the Interior, established the Historic American Buildings Survey HABs, based on a proposal by Charles E. Peterson, Park Service Landscape Architect. It was founded as a make-work program for architects, draftsmen and photographers left jobless by the Great Depression. Guided by field instructions from Washington, D.C., the first recorders were tasked with documenting a representative sampling of America's architectural heritage. After 70 years, there is now an archive of historic architecture. HABs provided a database of primary source material for the then-fledgling historic preservation movement. Historic American Engineering Record Recognizing a similar fragility in our national industrial and engineering heritage, the National Park Service, the Library of Congress and the American Society of Civil Engineers ASCE formed the HAER program in 1969, to document nationally and regionally significant engineering and industrial sites. A short while later, HAER was ratified by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers ASME, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers IEEE, the American Institute of Chemical Engineers AICHE, and the American Institute of Mining, Metallurgical and Petroleum Engineers AME. HAER documentation, in the forms of measured and interpretive drawings, large format photographs and written histories, is archivally preserved in the Prints and Photographs Division of the Library of Congress, where it is readily available to the public. Rivers, Trails and Conservation Assistance Program The RTCA program of the National Park Service is designed to assist local communities and the public in preservation of rivers, trails and greenways. Unlike the mainline national park programs, these programs take place on non-federal property at the request of the local community. One of their better-known programs is Rails to Trails, where unused railroad right-of-ways are converted into public hiking and biking trails. 
National Trails System The National Trails System is a joint mission of the National Park Service, the Bureau of Land Management and the U.S. Forest Service. It was created in 1968 to establish a system of long-distance national scenic and national historic trails, as well as to recognize existing trails in the states as national recreation trails. Several additional trails have been established since 1968, and in 2009 Congress established the first National Geologic Trail. National Heritage Areas National Heritage Areas are a unique blend of natural, cultural, historic, and scenic resources. Having developed out of a shared historic, they create a unique whole. Currently 2015, there are 49 designated heritage areas. Topic International Affairs World Heritage Sites World Heritage Sites have enough universally recognized natural and cultural features that they are considered to merit the protection of all the peoples in the world. The National Park Service is responsible for 16 of the 19 World Heritage Sites in the United States, Carlsbad Caverns National Park, New Mexico Chaco Culture National Historical Park, New Mexico Everglades National Park, Florida Grand Canyon National Park, Arizona Great Smoky Mountains National Park, Tennessee and North Carolina Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, Hawaii Independence Hall, Pennsylvania Kluane, Wrangell Street. Elias, Glacier Bay, Tatshenshini Alsek Park, Alaska, U.S., B.C. and Yukon, Canada Mammoth Cave, Kentucky Mesa Verde National Park, Colorado Olympic National Park, Washington Redwood National and State Parks, California Statue of Liberty, New York Waterton Glacier International Peace Park Union of Waterton Lakes Canada and Glacier U.S. Parks, Montana and Alberta, Canada Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming, extending into Montana and Idaho Yosemite National Park, California. Initiatives 24-hour All Taxa Bioblitz, a joint venture of the National Geographic Society and the National Park Service. Beginning in 2004, at Rock Creek Parkway, the National Geographic Society and the National Park Service began a 10-year program of hosting a major biological survey of 10 selected national park units. The intent is to develop public interest in the nation's natural resources, develop scientific interest in America's youth and to create citizen scientists. 2007, Rock Creek Park, Washington, D.C. 661 species, 2008, Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area, Los Angeles, California, 1,700 species and more pending. 2009, Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore, near Chicago in northern Indiana, 1,716 species and still counting. 2010, Biscayne National Park, Miami, Florida. 810 species were identified during this 24-hour event. As classification continues, more species will be added to the list. 2011, Saguaro National Park, Tucson, Arizona. During the 24 hours, 859 different species were identified, of which more than 400 were previously unknown in the park. 2012, Rocky Mountain National Park, in Estes Park, in August 2012 489 species were identified. 2013, Jean Lafitte National Historical Park and Preserve, in New Orleans. The Bioblitz will occur on May 17 and 18, 2013 in the park's Barataria Preserve. Biological diversity, biological diversity is the vast variety of life as identified through species and genetics. This variety is decreasing as people spread across the globe, altering areas to better meet their needs. Climate change, warming of the climate system is unequivocal, as is now evident from observations of increases in global average air and ocean temperatures, widespread melting of snow and ice, and rising global sea levels. Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, 2007. South Florida Restoration Initiative, rescuing an ecosystem in peril, in partnership with the State of Florida, and the Army Corps of Engineers, the National Park Service is restoring the physical and biological processes of the South Florida ecosystem. Historically, this ecosystem contained some of the most diverse habitats on Earth. Vanishing Treasures Initiative, ruins preservation in the American Southwest. The Vanishing Treasures Initiative began in FY 1998 to reduce threats to prehistoric and historic sites and structures in 44 parks of the Intermountain region. In 2002, the program expanded to include three parks in the Pacific West region. 
The goal is to reduce backlogged work and to bring sites and structures up to a condition where routine maintenance activities can preserve them. Wetlands – Wetlands includes marshes, swamps, and bogs. These areas and the plants and animals adapted to these conditions spread from the Arctic to the equator. The shrinking wetlands provide habitat for fish and wildlife, help clean water and reduce the impact of storms and floods on the surrounding communities. Wildland fire – Fires have been a natural part of park ecosystems. Many plants and some animals require a cycle of fire or flooding to be successful and productive. With the advent of human intervention and public access to parks, there are safety concerns for the visiting public. Green Park Plan In September 2010, the NPS released its Climate Change Response Strategy, followed in April 2012 by the Green Parks Plan. Climate-Friendly Parks Program The Climate-Friendly Parks Program is a subset of the Green Parks Plan. It was created in collaboration between the National Park Service and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. The program is meant to measure and reduce greenhouse gases to help slow the effects of climate change. Parks in the CFP program create and implement plans to reduce greenhouse gases through reducing energy and water use. Facilities are designed and retrofitted using sustainable materials. Alternative transportation systems are developed to reduce dependency on fossil fuels. Parks in the program offer public education programs about how the parks are already affected. The program provides climate-friendly solutions to the visiting public, like using clean energy, reducing waste, and making smart transportation choices. The CFP program can provide technical assistance, tools and resources for the parks and their neighboring communities to protect the natural and cultural resources. The large, isolated parks typically generate their own electricity and heat and must do so without spoiling the values that the visitors have come to experience. Pollution is emitted by the vehicles used to transport visitors around the often vast expanses of the parks. Many parks have converted vehicles to electric hybrids, and substitute diesel, electric hybrid buses for private automobiles. In 2001 it was estimated that replacement with electric vehicles would eliminate 25 TPY emissions entirely. In 2010, the National Park Service estimated that reducing bottled water could eliminate 6,000 tons of carbon emissions and 8 million kilowatt-hours of electricity every year. The NPS Concessions Office voiced concerns about concessions impacts. By 2014, 23 parks had banned disposable water bottles. In 2015, the International Bottled Water Association stated the NPS was leaving sugary drinks as a primary alternative, even though the Park Service provides water stations to refill bottles, encouraging visitors to hydrate for free. The Water Association made the national parks one of its top lobbying targets and in July 2015 Rep. Keith Rothfuss added a last-minute amendment into Congress's appropriations bill, blocking the National Park Service from funding or enforcing the program. The National Park Service discontinued its ban on disposable water bottles in August 2017. <laughs> Related acts. See also Topic Areas List of National Parks of the United States List of Areas in the United States National Park System List of the United States National Park System Official Units National Heritage Area National Memorial National Monument United States Topic People Topic Individuals Ansel Franklin Hall first chief naturalist and first chief forester of the National Park Service William Kent US Congressman, donated early parklands to the government John F. Lacey, Congressman from Iowa 
Harry Yount, progenitor of the modern National Park Ranger. Topic: Roles. National Park People. National Park Ranger. Topic: Related organizations. National Park Foundation. National Parks Conservation Association. Topic: Other links. Land and Water Conservation Fund National Park Passport Stamps National Park Service Rustic, Style of Architecture National Park to Park Highway National Park Travelers Club National Park Service Uniforms United States Senate Committee on Forest Reservations and the Protection of Game Wilderness Preservation Systems in the United States Alt National Park Service Topic. Sources Other sources Gallery of all U.S. national parks does not include national park system units of any other designation Gallery of National Park Welcome. signs National Park Service meeting notices and rule changes from the Federal Register RSS feed Records of the National Park Service, including an administrative history and a list of regional offices of the National Park Service up to 1988 National Park Foundation, the congressionally chartered National Charitable Partner of America's National Parks The short film National Parks, An American Legacy is available for free download at the Internet Archive.